I had some neighbors who had a boat, and they taught me and my brother and sister how to ski. They took us out to the lake, you know, water ski. They took us out to the lake, and then when it was my turn, they said, Steve, at some point you're going to get up, and you're going to ski for a little while, and then when you fall down, and when you fall down, make sure you let go of the ski rope. That's what they said, Steve, let go of the rope. And I, which I, at the time, I thought, that seems superfluous. I'm not sure you needed to tell me that. I'm not a moron. Of course... <laughs> I'm going to let go of the ski rope. Well, you know what happened. I got up, skied about 50 yards, fell, and I held on to the ski rope. I wasn't being obstinate. It was just instinctual. And they drugged me for a while, and a little while around the lake. I drank about a gallon of lake water. And then finally, that rope was ripped out of my hands by the force of the boat and the resistance of the water, right? Uh, apparently, and I don't think it's just me, apparently there's something instinctual, and I don't know if I thought I was going to jump up and barefoot ski, but there's something instinctual about holding on. And likewise, in this whole idea of going to heaven or being accepted to God, there's something in us that wants to hold on to this idea, I'm a pretty good person. I'm, no, I'm not, not any worse than any of these other people. I'm pretty good. If anybody else is going to heaven, I am because I'm a pretty good person. And Paul in chapters, Romans chapter 1, 2, and 3 is just decimating that whole idea. And when he comes to his conclusion that we're going to read here in verses 10 through 18 in Romans 3, this is where he just seems to rip that rope right out of our hands with the force of our sinfulness. Listen to this. There is no one righteous, not even one. There's no one who understands. There's no one who seeks God. All have turned away. They have together become worthless. There's no one who does good, not even one. Their throats are open graves. Their tongues practice deceit. The poison of vipers is on their lips, and their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Ruin and misery mark their ways. And the way of peace they do not know. There is no fear of God before their eyes. That in and of itself is fairly compelling, but it's got a lot of they and them and there in there, so we still might feel like, oh Lord, thank you, I'm not a sinner like that guy over there, like them. I like to put these kinds of things in the first person when I journal and when I pray. Listen to this in the first person. I'll read it for me, you read it for you in your mind. I am not righteous. I do not understand I do not seek God. I have turned away. I have become worthless, and I don't do good. My throat is an open grave, and my tongue deceives, and the poison of vipers is on my lips. My mouth is full of cursing and bitterness, and my feet are swift to shed blood. Ruin and misery mark my way. The way of peace I do not know, and there is no fear of God before my eyes. That's me. Some of us got saved before we even thought we were lost. And so we don't have a, a, a very deep appreciation for the grace of God. Why? God didn't have to stoop down very far to save me, pretty good person. What did Jesus say? He who has been forgiven little loves little. We wonder why we love God little. Why don't we love God more? Why don't we sing with more passion? Why, why aren't we eager to come and worship God and pray to God and read His Word? Eh. Forgiven little, love little. Who clings more tightly to that life preserver? The swimmer or the non-swimmer? It's the non-swimmer. He knows that life preserver is his only chance. And so, Romans 5.8, the Bible says, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were sinners, while we were all of that, Christ died for us. The great blessing in understanding the seriousness of our sin is it positions us to desperately seek the one way of salvation that God is offering to us, which is grace. Salvation by grace through faith. God treating us the very opposite of how we deserve to be treated and giving us the very opposite of what we have earned. 